Hi guys, welcome to the very first episode one of Gamers Assemble. Joining me today are Llama Llama. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Words are very helpful. <laughs> and Tigger Time himself takes... Hi guys! We're professionals. I don't Super know if professional. That's... Absolutely. <laughs> we, we, we've all done loads we've, of this before, we've right? We've done loads of this before, yeah. If you are joining us for the very first time, <laughs> this is episode one, so it is going to be a little bit janky here and there, so please bear with us, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy it anyway. Um, today's topic is going to be guilty pleasures, but before we get into that, I want to know, what are you playing, Tix? Well... I've been playing a little bit of Death Stranding post-game missions. It's really good fun, actually. Uh, and I've sort of lined up a couple of things for this week. I'm going to play We Were Never There, or We Were There, with my brother. Co-op, like, sort of adventure game. Very excited about this, so, yeah. Oh, what's that one? I haven't heard of that one. Um, it was one of the games with gold in it, Xbox Live a few months ago, and it just looks like something very different to, you know, the standard multiplayer games that we play. So I'll let you know about that next time. Yeah, definitely. That sounds interesting. And you managed to get to the end of Death Stranding as well. Oh, yeah, I powered through that. It was amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what did you think? It was uh, I can't thank you enough for that recommendation. It was it, absolutely it a phenomenal. It, it changed my life a little bit at the end. And through lockdown and stuff. I'd recommend people to play it because it's a bit like, oh my god, this is this is actually happening. Did he know? Did he know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about like some of the things that people have said? It's a bit like a, a Royal Mail delivery service simulator. <laughs> um, it is a sort of like Amazon. You're basically an Amazon guy, and you actually have to deliver some pizzas, which. <laughs> <laughs> You are delivering. Which is apocalyptic. <laughs> yes, and everybody is in their bunkers. No one's allowed to leave. And then whenever we all locked down and we were all like in our houses, I was like, oh my God, is the stranding coming? Is the stranding? And the weather was awful. And I was like, oh my God, they're out there. They're out there. I'm staying in. <laughs> as long as there's, there's no inky handprints anywhere, I'm sure you'd be fine. Mm. <laughs> what are you playing, Lama? Uh, this weekend, it has been about the grind for me. Uh, Fallout 76 have just brought in seasons, so you have to earn score points to get like rewards and things. Some of the rewards are pretty shit, uh, but they have got a ghillie suit skin for different types of armor, which I think is super cool. So I'm trying to, to get, uh, get caught up with that because I haven't been playing every day. Um, but it's double score weekend this weekend, so I'm catching up a bit faster, which I'm excited about. So, so I'm going is, through doing all the more challenges. Is the skin for the power armor? Uh, these there is a skin for the power armor, but it's not a ghillie one. It's the it's the stupid space ranger one or something. Uh, it's awful. I hate that one. <laughs> um, but the the ghillie suit skin, as you progress throughout the little sections there's one for each different type of armor so the wood armor the the combat armor combat armor and marine armor is what i'm after but they're sort of in the second half so i need to get my ass in gear <laughs> i said i i hate grinding oh i hate grinding but sometimes the gifts like the rewards are all right so i don't mind it sometimes sometimes I the grind care. is just worth it sometimes you sometimes just, it's you just a grind yeah sometimes it's in it in it just sometimes just to grind <laughs> yeah, but it is so so hard sometimes because you just like especially if you have to unlock an area and you have to grind to get there it's like oh i just cannot be arsed please just give me the area please please <laughs> well what's your playing llama um i've been playing a little bit of daisy I've uh, been doing that a little bit. My friend got a uh, private server, so we've been messing about with the, the different settings in there. Uh, we accidentally made it rain for like 24 hours. That was terrible. <laughs> Daisy's <laughs> the survival survival horror. Um... Yeah, it's it's ridiculously awful, actually, like as a premise, <laughs> because you drop in 
somewhere on a giant map. And the map's like two, three, maybe four times bigger than Skyrim map. Like it's a giant map. And all the, it's it's like a post-apocalyptic thing that's set in like Russia or somewhere like that. It's called Cherneris, but it's Russian basically. All the city names, like all the street signs are in Russian. So it's really hard to figure out where you're at. There's no map in the game. Like you can't bring up the map and figure out where you're at. There's no compass on your screen, so you can't tell which direction you're facing. There's not like markers that tell you where the towns are. You literally, you download an app that gives you the map, and then you have to work out how to tell directions, how to find shelter, how to move inland. And at the same time, zombies are trying to kill you and also other players. Oh and my God. It sounds terrible. But it is so fun trying to see how long I can keep a tune alive while I play it. <laughs> my best my best on a public server is probably about eight hours altogether. And then somebody murdered me. That's and nice. That was a bit of a bummer. I would last like two <laughs> seconds in a game like that. Like yeah. two and I'd be out. I'd be, <laughs> out. I'd be dust. Like yeah, I get murdered a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you respawn when you get murdered? Yeah, you respawn, but you respawn randomly on the map um, as a new character, a new tune. There's only like five or six versions of the characters. And you have a random set of like three things in your pocket. And then it's like, right, figure out where you're at, figure out where the nearest town is, try and get a weapon, try and stay dry so you don't get a cold, because if you get a cold, you'll die. What? Um, yeah. like It's <laughs> it's pretty deep, like the, the whole survival mechanics of it. It's like thirst, yes. blood, disease, like the whole, I couldn't do it. I can't even play a Dark Souls it, game, never mind trying to survive a freaking zombie <laughs> apocalypse. Like. Oh, I tried to get Dark Souls. I tried to get Dark Souls a couple months ago when it was on Game Pass. And my friends were like, oh, you got to get it. It's really good. We can play it as a, you know, as a crew again. I was like, all right, cool. And I screwed up and I downloaded the DLC packs instead of the game. Uh, and I didn't realize until the game was no longer on sale. So I have all the DLCs for that, but I haven't played the game. See, I did this thing where I got Dark Souls 3 on sale and then tried to play it and I've been horrendous at it. And then one day I saw that the DLCs were um, on offer. So I was like, Mm -hmm. I am going to buy these DLCs and I'm going to commit to playing Dark Souls 3. So I started playing Dark Souls 3 on a stream and some guy jumped in to help me out because I was just failing miserably. And we played for about 45 minutes together and I've not been back to it since because once he left me, I was like, well, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't. I, I, think, I, yeah, can't. I think it's one of those things you need to be in a crew. I can't go backwards and I can't go forwards. <laughs> like I am just, just forever here. stuck here in this one point next to this bonfire. I'm never going to move. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, if you're not averse to a bit of game flip, you can buy souls on there power up your character oh yeah true mm, i don't really want to no. no no you'd just be stuck there forever, <laughs> stuck there forever. <laughs> I, like, yeah, I like the idea that i you know i've left this character just to to find his own way through the dark souls universe and i'm never gonna have to go into there to see how he's getting on he's just there. i'm he's sure he's fine, fine. he's he's sort of he's living his best life <laughs> oh <laughs> gameplay now games wise talking about it I've been playing Ghost of Shishima. I cannot say that. Ooh, say that every time. Ghost of Shishima. I am so into it. I am so into it. I've not even... I've unlocked the bit to go to finish off the first sort of section. So you have like... It's a bit like Assassin's Creed Odyssey in some respects. You have this island. You've got bits that you can wander around. Um, and unlock and find hidden secrets and all those kind of things. Um, and you've got three tiers of missions. You, gold is like your main story missions. Silver slash white are like your general just tales of Shishima. Um, and then blue are these mystic ones. So it could be like they're talking about this ghost or something that's haunting this village. And you head down there and it's not. It's something else. But um, So I've un- done all the bits to get to the next part of the things, but I just keep going around and raiding random Mongols and doing following this fox around that takes me to these little shrines and going for baths. I just, I just do everything but play the actual main story. It's so good. You <laughs> have a pet fox? There's a pet fox. Well, he's not my fox. I meant, 
he's like a spirit animal of the island and like he shows up and you oh, okay. you follow him and he takes you to these little shrines that help boost your um the any game where i can get a pet yeah yeah any game i can get a pet you can pet him yeah like good good good, good fox like you took me to the shrine good fox and that's, that's the second criteria you have to have a pet and you have to be able to pet the pet hmm. If those, oh, yeah. As long as those two things are met, like the game's gonna be all right. Yeah. The rest of it's kind of like whatever. Can I pet the dog? Can I, can I, can I, can I touch the animal? Is the animal lovable? Can I love it? <laughs> yeah, crap storyline, yeah. but I can pet this dog. Yeah, I'm there. And I will build a house and pet dogs all day. <laughs> Don't you underestimate me? <laughs> um, and Jin has a horse as well, and he has such a fun relationship with this horse. Not in like a fun relationship. Wow. Like, like they're like you're really selling this. They're really in like he's really grateful for this horse, like and loves yeah. it. Yeah, you can tell it's good. I I'm bet gonna, I'm gonna step away from the horse right now and talk about <laughs> the other game that I'm playing, which is Star Wars Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order, which oh, is somebody yeah. that can't play a Souls game is pretty Soulsy. <laughs> Okay, I've heard a lot of really good things about that one. I've not played it yet, just because I tend to be shit at Star Wars stuff. Well, so it's it's, it's set after Episode Three, and you're a Padawan that got away, sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. And it's very much focused around blocking and countering with your lightsaber. Oh. And you can kind of customize everything. So you can customize the colors of the blade or what the blade the hilt looks like all those kind of things um but it's probably the closest thing to a souls game that i can actually play and that's only because i can turn the difficulty down (laughs) 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 so if it gets too much i can be like i'm gonna drop this i'm not i'm not a jedi master i'm gonna take it back down to like story mode or something like that's good (laughs) i'm really enjoying that but if it's yeah if if it requires blocking I'm shit at blocking. Oh. Like every game I play, I just can't. I yeah. I'm not gonna block. I'm just gonna run at you and try and shoot you. And blocking is not gonna happen for me. So if that's I, the game, I'm just gonna avoid that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much block and parrying. Mm, <laughs> totally yeah, there. No. Totally there. Apparently, I saw something on Facebook uh, that was gays don't block. We dodge roll. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, so I was like, oh my god, this is my thing, I'm down. And then there was a lot of people that were very angry about that. And I was like, <laughs> I do block, I do block and counter. And I'm like, no, that's too much effort. There's too you have to precisely time your buttons. I'll just overpower mm-hmm. my character and away we go. I will run at your face. I'm not blocking. Everywhere. Look at my <laughs> 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 oh, Good old memes. <laughs> I love them. We gotta love a meme. Okay, so getting into the topic of today, which is guilty pleasures. So this is Ooh. anything that's like a game that's maybe not very popular or didn't get a good reception or something, but you've just got a soft spot for it and just really enjoy playing it, regardless of what the haters say. Lana, what is your guilty pleasure? Oh well. This is an old game, actually, and I kept my Xbox 360 specifically for this game. Uh, My plan was to get rid of the 360 if and when this game became backward compatible, and it never has, so I've just still got my 360 and I play it um, for a game called Naughty Bear. You guys ever heard of that one? No. What was Naughty Bear? Come on, tell tell us all about Naughty Bear. So Naughty Bear came out in like 2010, so you know it's a little old, um, but it's um, it's almost like a David Attenborough style narration guy, right? And he's narrating the story of these teddy bears on Teddy Bear Island, and they have a teddy bear picnic, and your character doesn't get invited to the teddy bear picnic, um, or he gets, you know, he doesn't get invited, but he decides he's going to go anyway, so he makes his own little gift, and he waddles down to the teddy bear picnic. And the teddy bears laugh at him for his gift. They're like, your gift is shit, teddy bear. We hate you. Diddles is the horrible Aww. bear's name. So your teddy bear goes back to his little hut and he's sad. And he's like, well, I'm going to do something about this. And then he pulls out a machete. And then the rest of the game is you going around the island and just 
rampaging and murdering all the bears and like their fluff comes out and you can hit them with golf clubs or like any there's so many ways you can kill the bears and the whole time this really like friendly like david attenborough voice is going yes to defluffication <laughs> I, I, I think i remember this coming out actually because it, was there like some sort of hoo-ha about it because it was quite controversial or something yeah, there is. So there's lots of different ways you can kill the bears. I mean, and they're really nice, like, cartoon-looking bears. So it's kind of, <laughs> it is a bit demented to chase them around and kill them. Um, but if you don't want to use weapons, there is an option to jump out and scare them repeatedly until they go crazy and top themselves. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! So that would be the controversy there. Uh, yeah, I do feel a little bad when I do that one, so I try to stick with the golf club. That's my favorite. Um, um, but- <laughs> could, could I just take, take a moment to appreciate? I kind of don't like scaring teddy bears to the point where they commit suicide, so I just use a golf club. <laughs> hey, like that's reasonable. <laughs> I just want to play it. It's actually kind of not game everyone should play. Yeah. <laughs> Did I, I get too guilty? <laughs> I love it. I think it's class. They they need to bring this make this game back for compatible so we can yes. all play multiplayer. Oh god, can you imagine? It'd be awesome. I've got a funny feeling it's not going to get put on Game Pass though. <laughs> No. It should. I pay extra. It's not going to be a game pass. <laughs> Can you see like one million moms working? This, right. Does this game, like, is it on any other platform? Naughty? No, no. It's just 360. They came out with a couple of DLCs for it, like Teddy Bear and Paradise and things like that. Yeah. But they were just slightly different maps, same sort of premise, um, all on the 360. Apparently it's, on, yes. apparently it's on iOS. Oh, and well, my so work phone is an iOS. A PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and iOS released 25th of June 2010. <laughs> I'm gonna, as soon as this is over, I'm going to be on my work phone going, Download Naughty Bear. <laughs> I, I want to play this game. Is it a long game? No, I mean, there's not really much of a story other than you're just trying to kill all the bears that were at the picnic. So each level is you finding a bear and having to kill everybody to get to him and then kill him. So it's it's not a complicated story. There's not complicated mechanics. You just run around and hit stuff and be mean. And sometimes that's really fun. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just on the Wikipedia for this. And the opening line of the, the plot is set in the 1980s, Naughty Bear is the only bear on Perfection Island who's not invited to Dudley's birthday party. Yes! That's it. The birthday party. <laughs> they should have invited him. It just goes to show, if you have a party and it's a tiny little island, you got to invite everybody or else somebody's going to get mad. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the life lesson to take out of that game, I think. Yeah. Invite everybody to a party, less be faced, More present. be faced with the golf club. <laughs> <laughs> Tiggs, have you got a, a guilty pleasure for us? Um, I do actually. Yeah, uh, a game called Buster Groove. Did any of you guys ever play it? It's a long oh, is that time. One of the dance games. Yes, on the PS One. Oh my god! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my god! It was. Done and the characters were amazing. The soundtrack, I may have downloaded the soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's on your, it may or may not be on my Spotify playlist, but you know, <laughs> I may still listen to the soundtrack. <laughs> Wait, so I'm casting my mind back, and I, the, the PS1 didn't have like a Kinect style camera on it, did it? Oh, no, this no, was no. just button pressing. This is why oh, this was... is bad. So, yeah, you press oh. the button. And hard mode, you could remove like the little um, box that told you what buttons to press, and you just did it all yourself. Uh, it was pretty cool, and because um, <laughs> you could see all their dance moves then. And uh, and how yeah. much choreography did you learn personally from this game? Well, this is what I was going to say. So this is the really guilty pleasure bit about it, right? So <laughs> it's actually quite embarrassing, but it's so good. Tell it, tell it. <laughs> Spill the beans. <laughs> 
<laughs> so my favorite character was a girl called Shorty, and she wore dungarees, and she was French. I'm pretty sure she was French, yeah. And she had a little mouse in her pocket of her dungarees, little stuffed mice. Aww. And when you did, and when you did her super duper dance move, um, the mouse jumped out and got on the floor and did the, da- the same dance moves and danced with you. So she she was my favorite character, right? So did you play the lesbian? So you dressed. <laughs> so you dressed as the mouse. Is this where we're going? <laughs> No, 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 no. So I may have learned some of her dance moves. Uh, I did sort of like put on some videos and stuff and try and do their dance moves uh, to varying degrees of success. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to be honest, actually, whenever we were through lockdown, <laughs> I YouTubed some of like Bust the Groove and I may have like done some of the dances in my living room. <laughs> Well, I think well, that- in that case, we need a Patreon. People can come in and pay, and I want video clips of you on a Patreon. Beauty, we gotta make this happen. Yeah. We, we think I think we should get you to start posting some tease clips or something on your Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Just like little little short trailers of uh, of you dancing the busted room. Oh, ain't nobody got time for that. Some of the guys could do proper break dancing. Like, it was amazing. <laughs> it was just so cool. And all you had to do was press buttons. It's not like these dance games now where you've got a camera and everything and you have to replicate the moves. You could press buttons and you'd be the coolest dancer that you would ever want to be. It was awesome. Without moving from the sofa. I love it. <laughs> so, Considering my awesome. level of coordination, I might be able to do that game. <laughs> oh, it's, I, still ha- I still have my copy and I've got a PS2 somewhere that I need to dig out and start playing this game again because it's just amazing. Oh, nice. We'll do like a Twitch stream of it. Yeah, for sure. When I got got my PS4, I was like, right, because I was quite late to the party with PS4. It was Spider-Man that finally sold me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, right, back catalog, please. Bust a groove, bust a groove. I was was like, I I still, every few months, I still have a look to see. (laughs) (laughs) So just on the the wiki wiki for bust a groove, and Shorty was 12 years old, and was classified, I think it's a dance style, was funky dance candy hip hop. <laughs> That's me! <laughs> That's me when I'm in the clubs! Oh my god! Yeah! And I totally just totally. Right there. Funky dance candy hip hop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and her bio is she is the daughter of a diplomat as her father and a supermodel mother. Obviously, Shorty lives in a rich with a rich family with nothing better to do with dance with Columbo, her pet mouse. Her love for outdated music drives her to madness at a flea market where she's frantically searched for eight track tapes. Her favourite word is friendship. Aww. Yay! It's like a Care Bear dance game. And oh. this is why I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her away from Naughty Bear. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the don't, don't let her on Perfection Island. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, she won't survive. <laughs> I'm going to kill you with the power of dance. <laughs> I apologize in advance. <laughs> so funny. Def- so, oh, definitely watch it. YouTube some of the songs. Gonna... Like it's like the songs could actually be released in the charts. Like it's sort of like very catchy. I doubt that. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of my guilty pleasures is going to be um, a little game called Alien Colonial Marines. I don't know if you've ever played it or heard anything about it. Oh, it's, it's like a Doomy style game, isn't so it? So this was so Ridley, not Ridley Scott, but the Aliens franchise, Sigourney Weaver, mm-hmm. Ridley, all that kind of stuff. They did a game um, called Colonial Marines. Oh, what you didn't come out? Let me find out. But it was made by the same guys that do Borderlands. Um, oh, okay. So let's just look. And... Oh, Sig- it's Sigourney Weaver in the game because I'll buy it then. Oh, well, so, surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there? No. So it came out 2013. Gearbox were the ones that did it. Sega was the publisher. And they came out and promised that this was going to be a sequel to Aliens. So um, they were going to. The premise of the game was the second batch of Marines was going to the same planet that Ripley ended up on to find out what happened. And it was going to be all about the lore and all that kind of stuff. They showed off some amazing 
like graphics and everything else. But when it came out, it was a shit storm. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> the AI was broken. Like, the graphics are massively downgraded. The story was gash. Like, it's a generically renowned as an awful game, but I fucking love playing it. I love <laughs> blowing up xenomorphs and just running around in this world, like, attacking the aliens. So, was it Do like more. Dodge? Say again. Do you dodge? Do you dodge? Do you, Do you, Do you rock? roll? <laughs> I mean, we need to settle this debate. It's, it's, Do you a, walk? it's a first person shooter, so I just shot them away. Nice. Yeah. And is it more? Or, so it, or is it? It's like a first person shooter with like maybe like the tiniest bit of horror. I mean, it's supposed to be scary, but it's not very scary because the aliens like run around in circles. Like they'll just run into the wall. They're, they're just they're just fun. <laughs> They are gunfire fodder, and it's all down to this coder came out and he, he messed up one line <gasps> of code in the AI. I remember that. Yeah. So oh my you, god, and it was everywhere. Yeah. Fix it? yeah. <laughs> so in the PC versions, they've been able to fix it, like because you can just you can find this code and you can change it. But in the console versions, it's still a hot <laughs> mess. <laughs> <laughs> and I I fucking uh, love it. There was even you see your work. Yeah, there was even two uh, players filed a lawsuit against Gearbox for false advertisement of the game. Like it was a complete shitstorm, and to this day, everybody reckons that uh, what's the guy from Gearbox? What's his name? Randy Pitchford, um, the guy from Gearbox. They reckon that. The money that they were given to work on this game, they just siphoned into uh, Borderlands to get Borderlands finished. And oh, that's wow. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Bad. yeah. So that's wow. That's my little guilty pleasure. It's a fucking awful game, but I just love the I love the Alien franchise. It's like Covenant. Have you seen Covenant? Yeah, a bit. It's a bit gash, but I'll sit there quite happily and watch it. No, that <laughs> yeah. did that not tie it back into like the whole? Yeah, kind of, but it's like Prometheus as well. Prometheus, mm. yeah, I will still quite happily sit there and watch it again and again and again. <laughs> even, <course>. even, <laughs> even Resurrection. <laughs> was the worst. Oh, that was my favorite one. <laughs> I loved how terrible it was, yeah. and I know we're getting off topic, but oh my god, Sigourney Weaver was hot in that one. <laughs> Oh, she killed a guy with a basketball. That is sexy. Did you know that the basketball shot was actually her? Sigourney did it. It's not like a two-take shot or anything like that. She just chucked that ball and got it in that hole. What a Makes legend. my heart pound a little more. <laughs> <laughs> she is awesome. Totally she is, awesome. Oh. She is pretty awesome. Have you got any other guilty pleasures, Lana? I mean, most games that I really, really like tend to be terrible. Um, just because I like terrible games. So, <laughs> you know, Fallout 76, everybody knows, is terrible, and we don't care. Well, I was going to say, you know, Fallout 76 people... is probably a good one. But they've, they've just had yeah. the Wastelanders update, haven't they? So that has it made it better? Yeah, the updates, the updates have definitely made it better. I think when it first came out, it was, it was clearly not finished. Well, people <laughs> and... were getting refunds, weren't they? They did the same thing. They sued for false advertisement. Like anybody in Australia could get a refund, and like it was, and it was it was sad because I've played Fallout since like God the mid nineties. I've played the games successively, and I love them, but they just missed the mark um, when it first came out. And you really did have to make your own fun. It, that's, that was the joke. You make your own fun, and so we. <laughs> We, you know, we started a girl gang and became griefers, and that was fun because we, you know, kind of role playing. We're raiders, we're griefy. It's fine, um, but now Wastelanders is out, and you've got seasons, so there's stuff to do. Um, yeah, it's a bit more fun. It's definitely more fun. If they released it like this, it would have had a whole different reception than releasing it the way that they did. But so, it's Fallout, so I'll give them a little bit of a pass. Yeah. See, the thing is with with seventy six, like I've played it a few times, and for me. All I want to do in it is like build bases. 
And then, then I start thinking it's like a really shit version of The Sims. Because <laughs> I'm just there, like, <laughs> post-apocalyptic yeah. world, like, putting my walls up, put a door here, mm-hmm. set my automatic machine gun over there, like... <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want and then I've got wallpaper and a little bed. Yeah, no, I get really into the camp building. Yeah, and I, I, get, just, really into I get really upset because it's like I want to build this thing, but I've not found the schematic or I've not like unlocked it because I'm not that level yet. And I'm just like, where's my muzzle load? Where's my muzzle load sheet? <laughs> like, I need to just open everything up. Like, just let me build yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, definitely. We do spend an awful lot of time building camps, trap camps, where you get people to come in and shop and then, like, drop the floor out from under them so they fall and die, and then you take their loot bag. That's a terrible thing. <laughs> oh, my thing. God. You're so mean. You never, do, so that. Mean. <laughs> you never a, do that. She's a maniac. <laughs> it's a <laughs> waste of I'm a raider. It's role playing. She's smashing up teddy bears and <laughs> building, <laughs> building traps for suspected victims. <laughs> It's a bit of a theme, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's my way to blow off steam. You know, if I'm nice in real life, then I can't just carry on being nice in video games. That's not a change. Does your character I'm nice in... In both. <laughs> <laughs> Does your character in '76 look like a teddy bear, like a naughty teddy bear? No, I did. I did. I did have a character for a while. My uh, my PvP main character that um, looked very much like a current political leader who I won't name so that we don't get all political here. But I thought it was great because everybody would either want to take pictures with me in the game or fight me. And I loved fighting. (laughs) So it was really good. And then if I won the fight, it was great because I won the fight. And if I lost the fight, I got to see my little character's body like fling off the screen in an explosion, (laughs) which was also a win for me. Um, so I had that for a while, but I've changed it now. I think now I'm just wearing a raven mask running around. Yeah. So yeah, my character is not a teddy bear, just some need, random. I think mouth. you need a teddy bear build. Yeah, I think you do. Yeah. There is a teddy bear outfit, actually. I'll have to see if oh, I can dig one out of my stash. <laughs> yes, please send us pictures. <laughs> send us pictures. <laughs> Tigs, you got any more guilty pleasures? Um, I do have a bit of a guilty pleasure that I played earlier this year uh, of a game that wasn't very well received. Um, sea of Solitude. Have you heard of it? Oh, is that? No, that's Sea of Thieves I'm thinking of. Is it, the oh, pirate, yeah. is it a pirate game? No. no. It's no about... What's the Sea of Solitude? It's awesome. So it's, it's sort of like this little girl and she's battling her way through mental health issues and it's about okay. what happens whenever you become so lonely you turn into a monster it's really sad like it's, oh. like it's it's such a great metaphor right but the it sort of got slammed because it was a bit repetitive in places and you know the some of the backgrounds were sort of similar whenever you went from area to area but i played it and i absolutely loved it i thought the story that they told was beautiful how they told it was amazing and, and you know and it you know a lot of people face different sorts of challenges in their life and i think a lot of people will be able to identify with the whole thing that if the darkness inside you grows too much you could become a monster or feel like you're out of control and it's sort of dealing with that in a very clever way and making it like a compelling game experience really you just interesting. Want to like i think i'm gonna go and try and maybe try and play this yeah, that, I'm so terrible. Because it get joy it gives me vibes of I really love games that don't take something like that and manage to turn it into a mechanic that tells a story. Um, I don't know if you've played uh, Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice. No, I've heard no, of that. Though. I know. So it's like the same thing. So they they touch on or the the main character Senua is schizophrenic, and it the whole game revolves around what is that like for somebody to live with schizophrenia and how do they perceive the world and how can those perceptions be used as mechanics to push the narrative forward? So like symbolism and stuff like, you know, you might see a shadow of like trees or something, but to Senua, she sees these ruins, runes, 
that she has to kind of line up and get just right because if she doesn't then it, it kind of messes with her and it blocks the path so it's really really interesting that sounds really interesting Not is that well. are those indie games yeah so it's it's by is it ninja theory let me have a look Hellblade. i find lots of indie games indie studios they come out with some really really like heartfelt storylines and stuff yeah. like uh, oxen free and, and other little titles like that so good yeah yeah so it's yeah it's ninja theories the guys that do it um they made uh heavenly sword enclave odyssey uh devil may cry the dmc remake okay um, uh kung fu chaos so they're kind of i want to say they're an indie team but they're not a, a large team but they've just been acquired by Xbox Game Studios. I say just. Um, I think it was a, about a year ago now. Uh, but it's definitely, it's, it's on everything. It's on PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch. Definitely check it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to check that one out. I've got two good ones now. I was sitting there thinking I need something else to play, but now I've, I've got my week sorted. Thanks, and it's it's yeah. not a very it's not a very long game either. I think it's only maybe like nine hours or something. Yeah, it's same like, with Sea of Solitude. Yeah, yeah, it's quite short. Yeah, it's really it's quite like dark because it's set in. Uh, let me have a look. Eighth century. England. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, no, is it England? I don't think it is. Oh no, it is. She's from Orkney. Um, and it delves around Helheim. It's a, uh, she's trying to save the lo- a soul of her lover um, from Hella. So it's like all this kind of Nordic um, Viking mythology and stuff. It's really cool. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. That's super cool. Yeah. And then Sea of Solitude. Let's see. See, what's this on? That's an e- it's an EA game. That's surprising. No, it was a. I'm pretty certain it was an independent studio though. That was do like it's That's a smaller true. studio. Yeah. No. So it's um, Joe My Games, and it was published by EA. So I wonder if it was like part of EA Indies or something. John. Yeah, I think so. Oh um, uh, yeah, like when they bought Mass Effect. <sighs> so yeah, Windows, PlayStation Four, and Xbox One. I'm gonna have to check that out. It is really good. It, 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 there's, I don't want to give away too much of the stuff that it, they deal with, but they, like, they deal with bullying in quite an interesting way and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, it's pretty cool. Like if you if you're into like metaphors, and that sort of thing, like definitely check it out. You'll like it. If you know, seeing how life events can impact someone and make them be something else that they don't want to be. Like it's so it's so super cool. But yeah, uh, lots of yeah, people are like, cool. Definitely, that's going to go on my list to play. Yes, more fans, more <laughs> fans. <laughs> <laughs> so another one of my guilty pleasures is going to be Pokemon Black and White too. I don't know if any of you play Pokemon. I play Pokemon Go. That's when I got into it. <laughs> I played original Pokemon Red and Blue, and I've done some Pokemon Go, but like after the OG stuff, I was like, no, it, it's too complicated now. I think if I got a Pokemon game now, I'd be lost. Like yeah. all this breeding and light and dark and everything, I'd be like, <laughs> I would need someone to sit and just go, you do this and you do that, and then look, you've got a new Pokemon. <laughs> Ta-da! No. So I, I played Pokemon back like the ogs red red and blue i played gold and silver and ruby and sapphire and then i kind of fell off didn't want to play pokemon anymore over it too old now like i'm 10 i'm an adult i'm an, like I'm 12, <laughs> I'm 12 years old mom i'm too old for pokemon like i'm gonna go and play like cool games like metal gear solid um <laughs> and didn't play pokemon until maybe two years ago, um, when Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon came out, and I was like, God, I do love Pokemon. Like, maybe I should go back and, like, start playing them. So I went back and kind of started replaying all the old games. Um, 
but when Black and White and Black and White 2 came out, like there was a massive hoo-ha because it was the first game where you couldn't you couldn't catch any of the original Pokemon from the previous games. They started out with a whole fresh slate of like how many Pokemon was it? Say like 150 <laughs> Pokemon or something. So you couldn't you couldn't catch a Pikachu and you couldn't catch oh. like all that kind of stuff. It was literally just the games that were in uh, I think it's the Unova, Unova region that like you could catch and that was it. I think in Black and White 2 they might have opened it up a little bit um, so you could catch, you could transfer in other Pokemon and stuff but there was no it was like a fresh slate of Pokemon and I fucking wow. loved it. I loved it when they did that because I, I am so sick of seeing Pikachu. <laughs> In every single fucking game, like you wander into a bit of grass and a fucking Pikachu turns up, or like any other of the 151 original Pokemon that like everybody seems to bump. I love them, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on Pokemon, but like I want new Pokemon. Oh, New things to play with. Like when they, when, when, I don't know if you heard about like Dexit. So, like, the new yeah. Pokemon games that came out on Sword and Shield, the Pokemon company came out and was like, hey, so, like, we've got this new Pokemon game coming out, but you're not going to be able to use, like, all your Pokemon that you've picked up over the years. You can only catch, like, 400 specific Pokemon. Whereas, like, all the games leading up to it have pretty much been, like, you can just keep bringing your Pokemon forward. Like, you don't have to worry about them not being able to be transferred into a game. And they were like, no, 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 it's just going to be these 400. If it's not in the game, then you can't bring it into that game. So everybody like was raging about it. Um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That, yeah, was like, like, that was a bold move. Yeah, and it was mm-hmm. like, it's like, like boycott Pokemon and all this other stuff. Just just ridiculousness. Like, And I'm just sat there like, good. <laughs> <laughs> I want new Pokemon. <laughs> I don't want to keep catching the same old fucking Pokemon. I want new Pokemon. I don't think I've ever seen you as animated. <laughs> <laughs> I like Pokemon. I want new Pokemon to play with. Who who was your original Pokemon and your very first game? Who did you choose? Bulbasaur. Oh. What, 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 what got you to that? I don't know. Dude, just it's just like a little, little froggy Looking thing with like a little bulb on his back. <laughs> and I love Vine Whip used to be my, my favourite move when I was like two. No, not two, but like, you know, like just playing Pokemon for the first time. Like I just thought well, Vine Whip was really cool as a move. I like Pokemon. It is a pretty cool move to be fair. <laughs> but you should well, definitely... We're we'll not getting should... into the Digimon versus Pokemon debate then. I mean, I love Digimon as well. I used to have, well, this is completely off topic, but I used to have, you know, like Transformers back in the day? Yeah, yeah. Did you remember the Digimon Transformers you could get? Yes, I do. And you tell me, like, oh, yes. I forgot about them. So it's like a little toy. Um, and oh, it's super cool. Was it, what's the one that's the angel one? What's its name? Angemon. And he started out as Padamon, didn't he? Yeah, so Padamon. Not, not that he super loved Digimon or anything. <laughs> There's no hesitation there. Yeah. <laughs> so so Padamon was like this little guinea pig looking thing oh, so with cute. like the big ears that you oh, could fly yeah. around with, right? And this toy was basically this guinea pig where you could open it up and it would turn into an Angemon. And like a big angel, trans- type. yeah, big, big angel type thing. Transfer me. <laughs> yeah. They had to split him open first. Yeah, like a transformer. You know, like so you have uh, a transformer. It's like a car. Yeah, like, you start pulling, pulling apart, apart a car. Yeah. I'm all right with pulling apart a car. Pulling apart a hamster feels a bit worse. I mean, oh my god, we're going back down this road. You we're bash, road. If you bash teddy bears. Like I don't think. <laughs> think true. <laughs> I mean, I don't have to my hand while I do it, I guess. <laughs> That's why I draw the line. <laughs> Come here, hamster. Oh, Come here. No, you're an angel. 
Yeah, but the <laughs> thing about Digimon is they could go, they could go, they could go back. Yeah. So he could go back to being a hamster again after he did like his big fight or whatever. Okay, okay. I'll let I'll let you have it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we need to get you one of these toys. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do you have any more uh, guilty pleasures, Lava? Um, no, not really. I mean, those are the the sorts of terrible games that I'm into at the moment. Um, I think, yeah. I mean, everything else I play is obviously awesome, <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm an awesome gamer. Yeah. <laughs> Tiggs, you got any? Uh... Final skeletons in the closet of your guilty pleasures. Uh, well, we've talked about Death Stranding, haven't we? That's divided the the whole gaming community. That game, I think. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> good game, though. Yeah, it is a very good game. Uh, the only other one that I can think of would maybe be Kingdom Hearts Three. That also divided. Is that the Disney one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I but divided it... a lot of people. Yeah, is it a guilty pleasure though? I don't know. I love it. I went and leveled up, bought the <laughs> bought the really expensive DLC for the amount of time that you had to spend on it, and then I was like, "Oh right, I have to level up to unlock this area." Oh no, oh, I got to grind. Oh, I grinded still... for hours. <laughs> it was so boring. I still have Kingdom Hearts three in its packaging, sat on my desk, ready to play. Yeah, I still need to, play. to open it. Well, so. I've I've never played Kingdom Hearts before, and it was me and Tiggs were talking about it one day, and he's like, "You have to try it, have to try it." I'm like, oh, you know, maybe like one day or something. And then I got my Xbox, um, because long story short, I wanted to buy Jedi Fallen Order on a console, um, and I also wanted to buy a uh, Xbox One controller for my PC. Um, and the two of them together at the time, there was like an offer on. So it was cheaper for me to buy a brand new Xbox than it was to buy the Jedi game and a controller. Wow. So I just bought wow. Yeah, so I just bought so it was like a hundred and so the the copy of the game that I wanted and the controller, it was gonna be like hundred and twenty pounds. But for a new Xbox with the game included, I think it was on offer at like hundred and thirty or hundred and forty pounds. I was like, I might as well just like That's the next a no you know. Yeah. 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 So like go into, yeah, I go into Argos, other shops are available, um, and <laughs> I go to make my purchase, and the woman goes, you can get a free game with this, and I'm like, bonus, so not only have I just got like a whole console, like, I've also got another free game, what's your, what's your choices? And it was like, Fallout 4, um, like some sort of Lego game, and both of them I'd already, I already owned, and she was like, or Kingdom Hearts 3. And I was like, well, I might as well take Kingdom Hearts 3. So I took Kingdom Hearts 3, and then I downloaded the collection on my PlayStation 4, thinking I'll play the collection like the original games, and then I'll come back to Kingdom Hearts 3. Start playing Kingdom Hearts. I've got no fucking idea what I'm doing. It's all right. It takes time. Do you know what? Controversially, and it's one of my favorite game series, I actually hated it the first time I played it. Yeah. I set it down. I was like, I don't want to play this game. It is not Final Fantasy like what was advertised. No, 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 no. And then someone convinced me to give it another go. And then, I, like, it changed my life. Totally changed my life. Kingdom Hearts, people. Kingdom Hearts. And love the third one. <laughs> because it's so much fun. They brought all the limit systems together. So you can just chain everything. It's amazing. And you're just doing all these overpowered moves all the time. And you're like, oh, yes. Yes, I am God. I am God of this game. <laughs> Oh, I have no idea what you were talking about, but you seem very excited, so that's nice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I guess my last guilty pleasure would be Fallout Four, because again, oh. like it didn't, it didn't get a massively good reception, really, did it? Like, but again, I, I just kind of like going in there and having my shitty Sims simulator. Mm-hmm. Like and running away from sense. Preston Garvey. Yeah, running away from <laughs> Preston and building my own little bunker. That was fun. That's why I enjoy doing it. That's why it's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get all the companions. Yeah. You make well, friends? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can make friends. Have you? Like, friend. 
football for well, us. Have you played? <laughs> have you played Fallout Four? Have you played any Fallout games? So my brother used to live with me for a while, and he was big into Fallout, and I was like, mm, okay. So I tried it for like ten minutes. And I was like, this, nah. No. I need something to be straight into some sort of action or lore or something quick to happen at the start to grab my attention and otherwise I just get a bit bored. Yeah, Fallout 3 was really good. Whenever he, he showed me what he did to me, it was so good. Well, what he showed me, whenever he showed me the bits that he was at in the game, I was like, wow, that's like super cool. Yeah. But then I was like, what do I have to go through to get there? <laughs> Is it worth it? It's definitely <laughs> worth it. You should, you should you should pick up New Vegas because that is really good. That's probably better. Yeah, New Vegas is definitely the I think the best one out of all of them. But that's the one they got Obsidian to do. Yeah. So. Well, well I'm thinking about getting is... seventy six now just to see your <laughs> trash talking, <laughs> looting, <laughs> looting crew going around and killing everybody with booby traps. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can run with those tigs. I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got any for our lovely little listeners out there that have just listened to us prattle on for 52 minutes about our gaming guilty pleasures? <laughs> any recommendations that you think they should pick up, Lama? Oh, yeah. Um, I picked up, uh, it was on Xbox Game Pass a while ago. It's still on there. Um, Outer Worlds. And I kept seeing the the trailers for it, and it looked pretty cool. And it's a, it's another Obsidian game, so I was like, well, you know, New Vegas was you know awesome, so I'll try that. Um, and it's so good, it is really good. They, it's not like a hundred hours worth of gameplay game, um, but they are just doing a, a a DLC for it on the Xbox. Yeah. Event. They they announced that, so there's a DLC for it coming. It's got really good queer rep, uh, and the, the Di- the dialogue trees. Whoever wrote the dialogue options for this game deserves like an Oscar or something. The dialogue is on point. It's hilarious. It's, so it's yeah, I would say that one. I love Outer Worlds, and it reminds me of like Fallout in space. Mm-hmm. Like it is. So, like it. Yeah, it's such a good game. You should definitely check it out, James. Oh yeah, it's a, like I saw all the adverts for it and I was like, yeah, yeah, this looks really, really good. But I'm sort of one game at a time kind of guy. I just need to power through. Life gets in the way and you're like, I don't have time to be as geeky as what I enjoyed whenever I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Who said? Uh, who? Where did Appleton come from? Who invented that? Can we revoke our license? I didn't vote for it. No. How do we do that? How do we revoke it? No. Idea. I think we just refuse to grow up and make gaming podcasts. Yeah. I think that's yes! <laughs> What's your recommendation, Tiggs? Uh, I think it has to be Sea of Solitude. Actually, like yeah. it. The, it comes on uh, Xbox Seal quite frequently. Grab it whenever it's a few pounds. See what you think of it. Like, drop it in the comments if you've bought it. Tell us what you think. Yeah. Um, it's just awesome. And if you're into like sort of that whole like metaphor, mental health things, just seeing how it's all done in the game, it's just it's just really interesting. I think they did a cracking job. Yeah, so definitely on my list. Now. Yeah. Well, the one that I would would like people to check out is a little game called Moonlighter. Um, so it's pretty much on every console, PS4, PC, Xbox, Switch, um, and it's kind of like a little dungeon crawler. It's procedurally generated, so it's kind of top down, two D, side scrolling kind of thing. Um, and you go in, you collect your loot, and kill these little creatures and whatnot. But the the bit I really enjoy about it is once you've done that, you come out and you go to a little shop that's your shop and you sell the things that you've been like like killing. <laughs> so you can sell like <laughs> not the not the actual creatures, but like you could sell like some gunk or some like iron that you found or you could fashion a sword. Here's and sell it. Yeah. So it's kind of like a shop simulator with like a dungeon crawling procedurally generated thing. I really enjoy it. It's good fun. Like, well, that so sounds basically, really cool. Yeah, it's Anything my... with like a Sims element, we're there for it. Like we're yeah, gonna do exactly. a shop simulator. Yes. We're gonna build a little Sims town. <laughs> we're there. Yeah, you get this whole little town that you get to renovate and invest into and bring things back. It's it's kind of one of those games I will pick up when I don't know what to play. 
You know, you're in those yeah. days, it's like, oh, I don't want to play. I'll just play Moonlight for a bit, and the next thing I know, it's like four hours have gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I've got Moonlight and Sea of Souls, and what was the other game that you said, Beardy? Uh, not the Aliens one, the, the other one. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Yeah, I'm not going to remember that. You'll have to. Yeah, you'll have right. to DM me that. Yeah. Uh, spell it. Spell it for me. Yeah, I couldn't spell that either. <laughs> um, American <we> don't. <laughs> Just Google it. Um, <laughs> so, what's Google? What's a, what's a Google? <laughs> what search engines are available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. Oh, dear. <laughs> Right, let's wrap it up there for today then, guys. Thank you very much. Um, we would normally do like a little reader mail thing. I say we would normally do, but this is episode one. So in the future, we may do some little reader mail. So if you want to like... Send us mails. Yeah, send, send us, us mail. mail. Tell us what you think of the show. Um, tell us if you played those games, if you enjoyed them, if you've got any recommendations and stuff. That'd be great. And the email address is gamersassemble at gmail.com. So that's gamer spelt with a Y like homosexual and assemble with very homo. yeah spelt like assemble with yeah. an gmail.com <laughs> <laughs> and you can check this out on podcast services um if you want to listen to us but if you'd like to watch us being idiots then you can go across to our youtube channel and check us out on all the social medias like all the elder millennials you'll find us on twitter and instagram at gamers assemble i've been a beta gamer Lama. I'm Lama. Tiggs. I'm Tiggs. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. 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 Bye.